Greetings, dear candidates. Welcome to our science lesson. I'm very grateful that you're following us once again online. Uh, basing on what we looked at in the previous lesson, we looked at machines. What did you say machine is? Somebody tell us. Okay. Yes, I'm waiting. Okay, yes. Uh, we say that a machine is a device which simplifies a man's work. Now, the question you should ask yourself is, how does this machine we are talking about make work very simple? How does a machine make work very simple? What did we say there? Somebody tell us. Okay, we gave two ways through which machines make our work simple. And we said one of the ways is by using less effort to do work. That means when you are using a machine, it is very easy for you to do your work. You just put in very little effort. You put in very less effort in order for you to be able to do work. For example, it would be hard for you to carry a bag of potion in your head. But it is very easy for you to push a bag of potion using a wheelbarrow, using less effort. So machines use less effort to do work. And then also machines speed up the rate of doing work. You are able to do work. Actually, you can do heavy work within a short period of time using a machine. Let's take an example of walking. If I'm to ask you to walk maybe from your home to the trading center around your home, you would take some time walking. But if you use the machine, for example, you got a bicycle and rode it, it would take you a very short period of time to reach. That is what we looked at. Uh, today, we would like to look at uh, our new lesson. And uh, what are we going to look at? We are going to look at the classes of simple machines. Remember, we grouped machines into two, simple machines, and then we talked about complex machines or complicated what machines now we want to not talk about the classes of simple machines what are they can somebody tell us what class of simple machines i know you must have had some knowledge of this can somebody tell us one example of oh okay one group of simple machines yes we have got levers yes and then after levers we also have inclined planes can you all say inclined planes? And then we have wedges. We have screws. We have wheels and axle. And then lastly, we have pulleys. So those are the six classes of simple machines. Can we list them together? Yes. Levers, inclined planes, wedges screws, wheels, and axle. And lastly, we have pulleys, okay? Now, we are going to look at only one of those groups. We cannot learn all of them at one time and complete, because it needs a couple of, actually, it needs, it takes us a couple of days to cover them up. So we're going to look at only levers. What is a lever? What is a lever? Should be the first question in your mind. Now, when we talk about levers, we, we are meaning a machine which is stiff. In other words, you can say, okay, what's a lever? We can say a lever is a stiff rod that turns freely on a fixed point called the pivot or fulcrum. Now, there are two words you need to know there. Actually, three words. You need to know that stiff. What does the word stiff mean? Unable to bend. Okay? And then pivot. And then also the word fulcrum. You need to know those three words. What is a lever? That is what we mean by a lever. A stiff rod that turns freely on a fixed point. And that fixed point is called the pivot or fulcrum. I want us to look at uh, I want us to look at uh, the parts that make up a machine that we call a lever. Now, this is 
Just a simple lima. Just a simple machine. Can somebody tell us its name? Somebody tell us the name of this? Okay. Yes, it is a pair of scissors. Now, this is what we call a lever. It is a stiff rod and it turns freely on a fixed point. And that fixed point is called that fixed point is called in a pivot. Okay? Then these parts here are stiff. Then the turning point is called a pivot. What about this one? Can somebody tell us the name of this? Oh yes, this one is a claw hammer. It's also a lever. It, can you bend this like this and then you break it? Or it, it bends freely? No. This, that's why we say a, a lever is a stiff rod that turns freely on a fixed point that we call a pivot or the fulcrum. So this is also a lever. Now we want to talk about parts of a lever. And we are going to look at, let us study that diagram very well and be able to understand. There are five parts that make up a lever. Actually, three major parts. But the other two, we just add them there. Now, we want to talk about this part here. I think that part that, uh, that is uh, having green sort of rectangle, that part is the Lord. And then the other side, actually in the middle, we have got the part that we call the full crown. What is another name for the full crown? Can somebody tell us? Yes. We also call it the pivot. Okay? And then we have got another part that we call the effort. So let us first master those words. The Lord. What do we mean by the Lord? That is the force that you are going to overcome. For example, if you are, you are pushing uh, a bag of cement using a wheelbarrow, what, what does the bag of cement represent? For it, it is the Lord. Okay? Now, the energy you are going to insert in order to push the wheelbarrow is what we call the effort. Okay? Now, the turning point of that wheelbarrow, where there is that wheel that rotates, that turning point of that wheelbarrow is what we call the fulcrum. There are four. The three major parts of a lever, take note, we have the Lord, we have the effort, and then we have the fulcrum. Now, there is the, when you look at the position of the effort and the Lord, okay, you find that there is a distance from the Lord to the fulcrum or the pivot, and then there is also the distance between the effort and the fulcrum. Now, let us look at this distance, which is between the Lord and the fulcrum. What do we call that distance? We call that distance the Lord. Um, whereas the distance between the effort and, uh, and the fulcrum is called the effort. Um, are we together, dear children? Thank you very much. Now, let us go ahead. This is a reminder. Please read and understand the meaning of the following words. We are basically talking about parts of a lever. What is the first part? Effort. What is effort? That is a force applied on a machine to overcome the load. That force you are going to apply. Like if you are using this, this claw hammer, the force you are going to apply on it in order for it to work. That is what we call the effort. Then we have got another word. What is that? Lord. What do you mean by Lord? Lord is, Lord is the weight of the body to be lifted. That is the weight of that body you are lifting. For example, you are lifting a bag of beans. That weight you are lifting is what we call the Lord. Or the bag of washer you are lifting is the Lord. Okay? If you are cutting a piece of paper using a pair of scissors, for example, now, this pair of scissors is a machine. Now, where you are holding is, is where there is the, uh, the effort. And then there is a turning point. And then, lastly, the paper you are going to cut using this pair of scissors is what we call the Lord. So can we try cutting this paper? Wow, I've cut it into two pieces. 
So now, this is what we call the Lord. Now, let us go ahead to look at the next, the next term. What is our next term, dear candidates? Our next term is, okay, there's also another meaning of Lord, the force to be overcome. Now, our next term is the fulcrum. If we don't call it the fulcrum, we call it the pivot. Now, the pivot can be explained as the turning point of a machine. The part of a machine that turns, like here, when you look at this, that part that turns is what we call the pivot or fulcrum. Now, after that, we want to look at the next we want to look at the next part. What is the next part, dear candidates? The next part is the Lord arm. We say the Lord arm is the distance between the Lord and the pivot. Distance between the Lord and the pivot. Then we have also the effort arm. That is the distance between the effort and the pivot. Okay? Now, let us go to the next part of this lesson. Can we sit up right and listen carefully? Our next heading is classes of livers. Classes of livers. Now, when we talk about livers, livers are grouped or they are classified. But how are they classified? They are classified into three groups. But what do they base on? What do we base on when we are classifying these levers? We base on the position of the Lord, the pivot, and the fulcrum. So, levers are classified into three groups according to the position of the Lord, the position of the pivot, and the position of the fulcrum. At one moment, one of them is in the middle. So, we have got three classes of levers. One, we have got a class of levers that are called first class levers, okay? We also have second class levers, are we together? And then we have third class levers. So, those are the three classes of levers that we have. What are they class? Let us read that. Um, after that, we cannot look at all those classes of levers at the same time. We can look at only one in this lesson. Can we look at only first class levers? What do we mean by first class levers? I remember I told you that to determine the class of a lever, we base on the position of the Lord, the position of the pivot, and the position of the effort. Okay? Now, when we talk about first class levers, it is a class of levers in which the fulcrum is in between the Lord and the effort. What does that mean? I, I want, I've just brought here this simple machine for you to be able to understand this very well. When we look at this, this is where we, we apply the effort. Where I'm holding is where we can apply the effort. But there is a turning point in the middle there that we call the pivot or fulcrum. And then we have got the Lord. Now, let us look at that very well. Here in first class levers, the fulcrum is in between the Lord and the effort. Are we together? In other words, we can write it in short as L. P E. What does that mean? Lord, pivot, effort. Therefore, the pivot comes in the middle, or the pivot comes in between. Are we together? Now, let us look at uh, more about these first class levers. In the first class levers, comparing the Lord arm and the effort arm, you find that the effort arm is longer than the Lord arm. For example, if I place this piece of paper here, you find that the piece of the distance between the piece of paper and the pivot is shorter than the distance between the pivot and where I am applying the effort. 
That's why we say in first class levers, the effort arm is longer than the load arm. Now, what is the advantage of having the effort arm longer than the load arm? What is the advantage there? That enables us to apply very little effort, very small effort. For example, I can cut this paper without even feeling that I'm cutting it, or without even feeling that I'm using much what? Force. Are we together, dear candidates? There are four. The longer the effort arm, the smaller the effort applied. Are we together, dear candidates? Now, these first class levers are referred to as force multipliers. We refer to them as force multipliers. Why do we call them force multipliers? We call them force multipliers simply because we apply very little effort when we are using them in order to overcome the load. When you are cutting a piece of paper, when you are driving a, a nail into a piece of wood, you find that you will use less effort than when you just used your body to drive that what? Nail into a piece of wood. So, the longer the effort arm, the smaller the effort applied. And remember, I've told you that first class levers are also called force multipliers. Force multipliers. In a way that you use less effort, but for them, they increase that effort so that it appears as if you have used too much of it so that you are able to overcome the load. Now, which advantage is there when we are using first class levers? What do we benefit? We benefit in a way that we can use less effort to overcome the load. So, an examiner like me can ask you, state one advantage of using first class levers. What do you say? You say that first class levers need less effort in order to do work. We apply less effort in order to do work. Are we together? Why is it that we apply less effort? The reason is simple. The effort arm is longer than the load arm. Okay? The distance of the effort from the pivot is longer than the distance of the load from the pivot. Are we together, dear candidates? So those are the two major questions they can, I can ask you. The first question is, so state the advantage of using first class levers. Then you say, less effort is applied to overcome the load. Okay? And then, why is less effort applied when using first class levers? The effort arm is longer than the load arm. Are we together, dear candidates? Well, I want you to sit upright because we are still moving on. Now, we would like to look at examples of first class levers. Which machines belong under first class levers? Okay, we have here some diagrams to show those machines. We have some diagrams to show those machines. What is the first one? We have some diagrams to show those machines. What is the first one here? We have got this machine here. I think what I'm really pointing at, that machine is called a seesaw. That machine is called a seesaw. Now, a seesaw is used as a play material, even here at school. When you're in nursery, you're using a seesaw as a play material. Then we also have the second example. But before we go to that example, take note of the position of the load. This is the load, this is the effort, but the pivot is in between. Then, this one is a crowbar. A crowbar is a first class lever because where you apply the effort is there, and then the load is this side, but the pivot is in between the load and the effort. Then, the third one is this machine that we call pincers. Pincers can be used for removing small nails out of wood, and then we can also use pincers for holding hot charcoal or burning charcoal. There's also this one that I've not, uh, I've not uh, actually named. What is that one there? That one is pliers. 
Now, pliers are useful to very many people, even you at home. They are useful even to mechanics. They are useful even to electricians. Okay? Now, what is the use of these pliers? Pliers are basically used for cutting wires. Okay? Pliers can also be used for removing uh, small nails out of wood. But I have not labeled the position of the Lord, the position of the effort, and the position of the, of the pivot. I want you to identify the position of those parts. Can I ask you? Yes. What do we apply at this point here? At that point, we basically apply the effort. Then at this point, this is the turning point. What we call the turning point of that lever? That is the pivot or fulcrum. And then here, we have where the load will be put. So those are four examples. Ciso, crowbar, pincers, pliers. Then we also have other examples. We also have other examples. And uh, one of those is a claw hammer. This one here is a claw hammer. It is also a first class lever. So when we look at a claw hammer, for example, it can be used for driving nails or removing nails out of wood. When you look at this, this is where I apply the effort. This is the load. This nail here is the load. And then this is the turning point. Somewhere here, there is a turning point that we call the pivot. So we can use it to remove nails out of what? Wood. Then, uh, leaving that alone, we also have a water pump. That one is used for pumping water from underground. That's what you call locally as a borehole. Then we have this. This is a pair of scissors. You have seen that one here. That one can be used for cutting hair. Those days we're using it for cutting hair. Then you can use it for cutting pieces of paper. And then we have got this one, which is important. Some of you buy uh, products from supermarkets, but those products are packed in tins. Those tins have got lids. But for you to open those lids, you cannot just use your hands or fingers, but you have to use a simple machine that we call a lid opener. It is also a first class lever because its pivot is in between the load and the effort. And then lastly, we have got a, this machine, these are scales. These ones can be used for weighing uh, things like meat. You can use them for weighing, this one here, scales. You can use them for weighing meat and other material, basically meat, okay? I don't want to talk about that, uh, that uh, category of meat. Now, those are the examples of first-class uh, levers. Now, I want you to take note of the following. The position of the fulcrum, load, and the effort in first class levers must be put into consideration. Okay? Now, I would like to thank you for following this lesson, and I want you to do every piece of work that we give you. I thank you until we meet next time.